Welcome to a new week, pilots. Look at this awesome matchup I have for you. Matchmaker giving us a balanced or mostly balanced throwdown. Two goblins, two moon bats, two pancakes, uh, two specialized on one team, two specialized on this team. That's why I furiously hit the record button after the match had started because I'm like, wow, I, I got to see how this plays out, right? This is fantastic. Sometimes Matchmaker is drunk and needs to go home, but this, this is fantastic. So we're gonna uh, we're flying out the goblin. Uh, trying to grind some points this is the end of last week's ratings, so I am looking for uh, personal points, and everybody else is too. And so, because of that, because of the matchup, um, that's cool. I want personal points, but you all should know by now if you've been watching me for a while. Uh, I'm I'm about victory first, and uh, whatever the objective is second. That's not how everyone plays, and you're going to see that in this match. Um, but that's how I play, and I'm headed to the mining plant, and their pancake is too, probably to shoot down some bombers, uh, which is great, great idea, and that is a good way to play. Um, but uh, it's not good to try and get into a turn fight with a goblin. <laughs> so um, again, don't turn in your heavies. I mean, I know that's you know not 100% of the time true, but for the most part, don't do it. Um, you saw he almost caught me on that first turn. That's probably because his pneumatic assist was rolling, but his pneumatic assist is now out, and he doesn't have any options left, and he continues to turn. And uh, that's not a good place to be in. So I'm just going to wheel him down and get a free 60 points towards this zone, uh, which is probably going to help us cap it. Um, and then I'm going to go after the bombers, which the goblin's not great for going after bombers. Uh, but these are bot bombers. They're not player bombers. They're not specialized with, you know, high point tail gunners. And uh, they've already been whittled a little bit by AA and everything else. And so I feel confident, even on this RB-17, uh, blowing them down a little bit. And I thought the fire was going to finish this guy off, and it didn't. Um, and I've got a choice to make. Do I go back for him? I'm like, oh, fire's got him. Nope, never mind. But then he's headed out of the zone. The ju 80 is headed in the zone. I figure I'll finish him off later if uh, something else doesn't do, me, do it for me, the AA or whatever else. So uh, the goblins actually, you know, these machine guns, these 50 cals at high tiers are actually really good, actually, for sustained damage. Um, well, even at middle tiers as well. Um, and that's one of the things that's actually helpful for whittling away high hit point targets is sustained fire as opposed to burst fire. And so I can just sit in here and do all that. And part of the reason I can do that as well is I have a very unusual setup on my goblin. I'm going to finish off the other RB here inside the zone, even though we've already got a lock, which is wonderful. And looking at how things are going and knowing the pancakes out of the picture for the moment, I decide we're going to sit on this mine. The mine is actually worth three zones. And so with three zones plus our garrison, we have four zones to two. We would win this battle if we hang on to those two zones. So. And uh, so I'm just going to stay here for the time being. Um, and I'm also going to try and see if I can get my bombers and ground attack aircraft clear to get their garrison, which would give us even more of an advantage. And so that's kind of why I'm chasing this F2G right here is you know, to put that on. Uh, so now I'm going to go chase down some ground attack aircraft. But I have the Goblin set up very unusually. It's already you know fairly fast. Um, it's very twisty and maneuverable, even though the turn time is not super great. Um, it's just a small aircraft, has really good rudder, really good pitch. You know, it's just squirrely because it's so tiny. Uh, roll rate's fantastic. And so what I've actually done is set it up on almost a pure protection build. Um, I, I, have, I have cockpit, cockpit uh, I have engine armor, I have, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, and all that's to counteract the uh, very low resistance to damage on this plane. Um, and then I have upgraded engine. Uh, to kind of uh, give a little bit of boost uh, to um, you know, just the, the thrust in the plane and the cruise speed as well. And so that's kind of how I play it. Um, I've found that a lot of times I can win one-on-ones even though you know, I don't necessarily have superior stats in terms of speed or maneuver if I can survive the initial contact with the enemy, right? And uh, that pancake was easy to dodge at the beginning of the match, but they're not always that easy to dodge. And you're going to see that here in a second um, as I take on some other aircraft. So. I am going to wipe out the B, uh, because again, these are great guns, even though they're not you know, big cannons or anything. Uh, and I see the Moonbat has come to play, and it's very low, which is surprising. And he's not jumped me, which is also surprising, so this is an easy victory. But I'm watching the minimap. Were you guys watching the minimap? I was watching the minimap, because I see a fighter coming in besides the Moonbat. And I turn to realize we've got a specialized P-51. So the Pancake Pilot, not happy with his loss to the Goblin is now burning in towards me. I dodge him, but I'm gonna take a little bit of fire. And that's the kind of fire, that's the reason I have the extra armor and stuff on here. Because a lot of times without that in this aircraft, just that brushing pass, I would have lost a component somewhere. 
But, uh, you know, we're about to lose that mining plant anyway, and it's rolled over twice. So I feel pretty good. I'm just going to leave. We're going to take the airfield then, if that's the case. And uh, the moon bat, our moon bat is here uh, doing all sorts of good things. And uh, I'm again watching the mini-map. Were you watching the mini-map? And I realized the P-51H is really upset about losing to me a second ago. And so he has followed me over here. So I'm going to do a little high yo-yo and come down underneath him. And I'm going to turn fight him. And I get whacked by a bot Jawa. And I lose a wing. And that's not good. And um, now I'm in trouble. So I just want to get out of the zone. I want to drag him down. And I'm realizing he's keeping up with me. So I'm pretty sure he's got his P-51H on a speed build. And now that I know he's on a speed build, I'm going to lure him into this valley. And I'm going to take him up in a spiral and just dump my speed. And I think I should be able to beat him in a turn fight. Uh, I'm just going to kind of vertical scissors, and we'll see if he can keep up with me. Because I'm not sure how good a pilot is, because he was turning into his heavy. And unfortunately, that fails because the moon bat never <laughs> left the mining plant. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, I don't think we had any of our stuff over there. Um, but for whatever reason, he was hanging out there. And this is where I want to pause the video and talk about something else that's going on in the background here. And that is that while we've been paying attention to what I've been doing and our moon bat has been doing great things, our specialized pancake has quit the match. Um, and that's really frustrating. And you're going to see why as this match unfolds. Why would you quit the match when you're in a specialized tier 8 heavy that can do some damage? We're going to talk about why he did that, um, and this is mostly on him, but it's a little bit on Wargaming as well. So let's finish out the match, and we'll talk about that as well. Available. So uh, knowing that our Moonbat is uh, trying to hold down the airfield, because uh, this is what we're doing right now with ratings, right? I'm going to spawn in as well, and then I'm going to go see if I can take one of the garrisons. The good news is we're also on Squall Line, and so we have an opportunity to turn the tables in our favor. Now, these two guys are coming back over, and for whatever reason this time, they ignore me. Now, I don't know if they, f they got revenge for the last one, they're feeling good, or they didn't notice that I spawned, if they're tunnel visioned on the, uh, the moon bat on my team or what. But neither one of them turns to catch me. So in this situation, I often ask in these videos, and I'll ask you too as a pilot, uh, what are you most afraid of? And for me, I am most afraid of the P-51 because that's the closest to my flight profile. I'm 99% sure I can outturn the moon bat because I was just doing it a second ago in the mining zone. So I'm more worried about taking out the P-51 first. And so that's who I'm going to dive on. I'm going to whittle. I'm going to lag roll. I'm going to get behind him again. And they're trying to get the moon bat because we've got eight seconds left, right? They're trying to blow him out at squall line here. And unfortunately, or fortunately for us, they get him before squall line, so he's coming back. Unfortunately, um, because of the mine, uh, mining plant and because we are down a player, um, we're losing in zones and they're about to pass us in points. And so that's really frustrating. So, but because it's Squall Line and I've got their uh, ground attack aircraft here, I want to take those out because that's our best opportunity for making sure they don't capture anything else, right? And I've got them right here. It's worth taking a moment to do that. And I'm hoping that the moon bat and the pancake, because I didn't realize the pancake could quit, are flipping some zones for us somewhere else. Um, unfortunately, they're not. They were locked in entirely on this zone for the match. And that is because Wargaming incentivized them to do that. Wargaming with the spring rating system in this week two, because it's on personal points, has told players, uh, your best thing you can do in these matches is to gain personal points, not to win the match. And that is not good for the long-term health of the game. That's not good for new pilots. That's not good for teaching the game. That's not good for fun and healthy gameplay. Because I can tell you right now, ask yourself which of these pilots had fun playing the game. Uh, which of them enjoyed this match. Um, our Pancake certainly didn't enjoy the match. He left. Uh, our P-51 struggling won the match as well. Uh, he left, right? Um, I kind of did, but I'm a little frustrated with what happened in the match, obviously. Um, so, you know, about half of our teams found this match to be not fun. And one of them found it to be so not fun that he quit. And going back and looking at the replay and the kill box, uh, the kill feed, and, and some of that kind of stuff, it became obvious that our pancake was doing nothing but playing over the airfield.
And so because of that, he kept getting shot down uh, because he was turn fighting over the airfield because that's the best way to get personal points. And this week was all about getting personal points. And unfortunately, you know, he was incentivized to play his plane poorly. Uh, and that's a real problem with some of the specials and some of the marathons that Wargaming puts out. So um, I'm not excited about a guy quitting the match, um, especially when I look at what happened. Uh, because if he had stuck around and capped a garrison at some point, um, maybe we would have won. <laughs> right? Um, we had some opportunities there. Or if he had come to the mining plant and dumped those tiny Tims there, and we had had a 2v2 over the mining plant, P-51 and Moonbat against Goblin and Pancake, we might have won that as well, right? There were opportunities to pull this match out, um, and they just didn't happen. And part of the reason they didn't happen is that player was told, don't play your plane well this week. Uh, play your plane in a way that is contrary to how it needs to be played. Um, and that's really rough. Last week with the Chevrons is better. That's encouraging players to play to the plane's uh, flight profile, right? To do what it's supposed to do in that. And, uh, you know, that's that's a really, that's a better way of doing things. Um, this week with uh, being in the top three, and uh, as far as we're aware, that's the same as the dailies. So that just means in the top three players, not top three, including bots, just as, as three players or less on your team, like right here, we would all be in the top three. And that's not bad either because it encourages you to just play, although there is an incentive to quit um, because if you join a match and there's only two players in or three players in, you can quit right then and you're already going to get a point. So it's not, not terribly great either in the long run because it can be abused, right, unless you finish out, unless you attach something, a mechanic of finishing out the match, which they were working on. And, you know, maybe it's a part of this and they just didn't announce it. If so, that would be lovely. Uh, but some of these things that Wargaming does, um, not awesome in terms of, um, you know, how they're set up. And so um, our pancake pilot uh, bears um, some of the acrimony here for doing the wrong thing, uh, for, for dumping on his teammates and dumping on the match. Uh, but Wargaming sh uh, should shoulder some of the blame for this as well. Um, it's partially their fault that these things uh, happen, and, um, and they can do better. Um, and that's not even a programming or a bug thing. That's, a, that's an event management thing. Do better with planning the events. Um, incentivize people to play well. Incentivize people to uh, do good things with their aircraft rather than doing silly things with their aircraft um, and rewarding silly things with the aircraft, right? Um, and you're going to see here, you know, um, uh, Mercy, I, I'm going to message him, and I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe something happened. Um, but you can see here, he was destroyed five times. Got 4,000 personal points. No, no aircraft or bombers. Only four uh, aircraft, and those are probably ADAs because he only did 1,200 damage total. All right, and 4,000 ground damage, which is really maybe one, one or two rocket strikes with a tiny ten. So I don't think he was ground pounding, um, but I do think he was trying to build personal points. And unfortunately, last week, he would have looked at this and gone, oh, this is only four chevrons. I need to go kill some bombers. And we might have had a different match. But this week, you know, because of what Wargaming did, um, this happened. And I will say that as a benefit of the doubt. I did message him, and, you know, he, maybe he got disconnected. Maybe it wasn't his fault. Um, but I just told him, man, we almost had it, you know. Um, if you had been there, we might would have pulled it out. And it's just an encouragement. I'm not going to insult him. Um, I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm retyping, trying to make it lighthearted and fun and, and encouraging, right? I don't want to put him down. Um, and I don't want you guys to either, right? Um, but I just ask him, you know, did you get DC'd? We almost had it, right? Like if you had stuck around, this would have been good. Um, and I'm hoping that that's the case. I'm hoping he just got DC'd. I never heard back from him. Um, but I I'm, I'm suspect he didn't. But I want to encourage him and, and anyone else who quits like this. So I went back in the match, and at the point where our pancake player quit, the score on the scoreboard in Conquest was 186 to 168. And we had the mining plant in the garrison, and they had the airfield in the garrison. So at the point when he quit the match, we were actually winning. Um, and that's the other hard part about this, right, it, is we were winning the match. We had an opportunity to pull this out. Um, and have a pilot quit when you're getting just sandblasted, right, on a supremacy or something, or near supremacy. Uh, or, you know, just that kind of thing, or you're <laughs> facing really uber-powerful aircraft and, and dealing with it in that sense. You know, I get maybe why you're frustrated and you pull out, but in this case, we were winning. Um, and so keep an eye on that if you're frustrated in a match. Um, you know, just think about other pilots in the team and what, what you're being incentivized to do, and maybe you can't pull it out this time, right? Uh, maybe it takes a little, uh, you have to wait for the next match to be able to get what you need. Um, or, you know, 
maybe Wargaming uh, does a little better job in terms of the planning of these exercises. But whatever it is, I hope this week goes well for you uh, in terms of putting together top threes um, and being able to do that. Um, I'm excited to have more videos for you this week. I'm happy to show you some more of the Gowland if you want. I think it's an interesting little aircraft. Um, and it's a good reminder for me because I won that on VBAT's uh, live stream. Uh, was, uh, and so that was a gift from him. Um, and I have fond memories of VBAT's channel and hope that one day he comes back and uh, uh, graces us with some great videos uh, because uh, we could use his presence. Uh, he did a really good job with all those. And I really started this because I missed those videos. And hopefully they put a smile on your face when you see them uh, pop up in your feed in the morning the way they did for me. Uh, and so uh, hopefully that's done that for you today. Enjoy your matches. Have a great time. Um, you know, have fun with the game. It's what it's there for. Don't don't break your back on these marathons. They're not worth it. They're not worth getting uh, really upset and, and rage quitting over. You know, if you need to take a break, jump tears, uh, come back to it. Uh, but stick with it. This is a great game, even though it's frustrating sometimes. And I hope I get to see you in the air this week.